Usually in research, we want to know if two groups are the same. Some manipulation has an effect, etc. This is our research hypothesis that group A is not the same as group B. Notice those are parameters, right? So we're talking about populations here. My hypothesis is depressed people and depressed people that take Prozac are different in some way. That's all it's saying is that they're just not the same. Their means are different. One's happier than the other, I don't know, right? However, these questions have to be mapped onto the statistical logic of populations and samples. The statistics sort of constrain the way that we can ask this question and the way that we can analyze this question, which is why we have to go through this convoluted logic of null hypothesis testing, right? So if the drug does have an effect, these groups would represent two different populations because they're different on our measure, right? This is perfect. This walks through even sort of once more. Conversely, if the drug has no effect, then people that take that drug and those that do not only form one population because they're not different, right? They're the same, right? Okay, so that's sort of the conceptual research question, and now we're going to go into the statistical side of that, and they map right onto each other. Um, so in order to test if our research hypothesis is true, we must compare it to a null hypothesis, which is different. Null hypothesis, statistically defined, is that all samples come from one population, or that the mean of one equals the mean of the other, right? The null hypothesis, conceptually defined, is that the groups are not different, there's no effect of your drug, Whatever. Basically, whatever it is, it didn't work, right? Your experimental um, manipulation didn't work. Does that make sense? Okay. Importantly, this is not the same as saying that the research hypothesis is false. All that you can say is we don't have enough evidence to say that our null is unlikely, but that doesn't, the flip of that isn't true. That doesn't mean that your null hypothesis is likely. It might be, it might not be. You can't actually answer that question. So arguing the null in research is actually very, very difficult because of this. So if you want to say, maybe people say, oh, men and women are different on this measure, right? And you want to say, no, they're not. That's actually a hard way to do research because the statistics make it very difficult to make that type of argument. There are ways to do it, but it's complicated and it's difficult and you got to do some tricky stats. You need big sample sizes. It's, it's complex. It's just important to realize that what the statistics tell us is the probability of getting samples from a given population from the same population. What it doesn't tell us is what's the probability that our hypothesis is true. And people often mistake that. Yeah. I just I want to make sure that I'm following this. Before so let me do the Prozac example. Before you get the experimental with Prozac, your assumption is that those two groups do come from the same population. Yes. Okay. Cool. So, in order to do this, first we set up our null hypothesis. Mean of population 1 is going to be equal to the mean of population 2. And our research hypothesis, the mean of population 1 is not going to be equal to the mean of population 2. All we can test here is the null hypothesis. We can't actually test the research hypothesis. We assume the research hypothesis if our null hypothesis seems sufficiently unlikely. Right? I think I'm sort of hammering that one in. That we can never say whether a research hypothesis is true. Again, you can't ever prove anything in science. I mean, this is sort of a deeper philosophical fact. Karl Popper, famous philosopher of science, basically argued it's impossible to ever prove any hypothesis. We can only argue it's our best explanation for a given data. Right? I can't prove to you that the sun exists. It's impossible. All I can say is that's the most likely explanation given the fact that we all see it every day, et cetera. Right? So just basic logic. Um, statistically, you can never 100% say that two samples come from different populations if you don't actually know the population distributions. If you did know a population distribution, and you knew, let's say, the highest score was 110, and you pulled a sample that had a mean of 120, you could actually say, we know it didn't come from that population. But in general, you're not in that type of a situation when you're doing research. So you can't ever say. All you can say is it was really unlikely. You can't say it couldn't have happened. That's, right. a, that's exactly what I was thinking about when I asked you, because I thought, like, two samples can be so different. And if you infer the um, properties of the population within the sample, how would you say that they are not? They are or are not? Right, and you can't you can't ever say that. But I mean, you have this problem in all of science, really. <laughs> So here we have a specific statistical problem about, oh, it's a probabilistic statement about, you know, it's unlikely that this could have occurred or something like that. Um, you kind of have that problem in all of science. Um, this is just a specific instantiation of that problem, right? You can't really prove anything ever in science. All you can do is say, 
all the evidence we have points to this, right? Sure, it may be false, and in fact, that's what Einstein did to Newton, right? He's like, oh no, your theory is wrong. There's a different way of thinking about it, right? But even now, Einstein could be disproven. You can't ever prove it, you can only disprove it. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Okay. So we can only evaluate how likely a null hypothesis is to be true with inferential statistics. So there you go. This lays the sort of foundations for where we're going from here. I have one little extra line there. If it's unlikely that both samples came from one population, then we assume that our research hypothesis is a better explanation of the data. So you sort of start with the most parsimonious explanation. Oh, there's no effect. There's no difference. Everyone's the same. And only if you've got enough data to say that's a really unlikely explanation, do you then move to the less parsimonious one that, oh, there actually is some effect. Right? Does that make sense? Cool. 